Hello and welcome to the advanced tutorial about the Mask Equalizer plugin. You've already seen this picture. It was used as the background in the first part of the basic tutorial, but we didn't do anything with it. This is a high key picture. By that, I mean that the most relevant parts of the picture do live in the quarter tones and highlights. There is basically no shadow in this picture, only the eyes and the nostrils of the horses are very dark. We may have a look at the histogram if you wish. I will do that by opening a curves adjustment layer, which, as you know, contains a representation of the histogram. This shows that most pixels lie in the quarter tones and highlight area. There is basically no shadow, as we said. If we want to give more snap to this image, we could try and use a curve like this, because you know the rule, the steeper the curve, the more the contrast. If you explore the horses now, you see that the little circle on the curve lies in a steep part of it. This means that we have more separation between similar tonal values in this area. So this is before and this is after. But of course, we don't like this version, because it has become far too dark. So we need a layer mask in order to restrict the effect to the light parts of the picture. This is where the mask equalizer becomes very useful. As you know, you can retrieve it from Extensions, Mask Equalizer. We already know the interface because it was discussed in the previous tutorial, and so we go straight ahead. I would like to mask the shadows here, and so what shall I do? I could simply click on shadows, but I get a surprise. Let me show you. I get a warning. It says that this layer type, and this is referred to any adjustment layer, is not directly supported by Mask Equalizer we need to make a duplicate layer with merged visible content. And the plugin does that itself. What we can do is simply go like yes. And if you noticed, this layer becomes invisible. And we have a layer here, let me show you, which is an exact copy of the image we created, only it has a layer mask based on the setting of the plugin. I clicked on shadows, so what happened is that the shadows are now dark in the mask. You already know that if we move the cursors, this situation changes, but let's start like this. The actual look of the picture is a bit better than without the mask, but we see some weird posterization in here. This is because luminosity masks have to be blurred to some extent, and you already know we can do that with the feather slider. So let's bring this up a bit, say to 30 or whatever, and you see that the situation really improves. The look of the mask that we can simply inspect by clicking on the mask button is now this. The more we feather, the more blurred it will become. How much to feather? Well, it depends on the size of the image, but usually quite a lot. This is what we have, and we can at this point try to mask other parts if we like the result, in order to maintain more detail in the highlights, but protect the midtones and shadows. We started from this image, and we ended with this image. Now. At this point, you may object that we don't have serious control on the aspect of the image because we can't use the curve anymore, but there is a trick. You can simply click on this mask and drag it onto the mask of the curve. When Photoshop asks to replace the layer mask, simply reply yes. Now we can hide this layer and make the curves layer active again. We can click on the curve, and now we have a lot more control, total control indeed, 
And on top of it, we have a mask that we have created by working on the composite layer. This is one of the possible applications of the mask equalizer, and I would now like to show you something rather different. This photograph was taken almost as a joke. I knew too well that the light wasn't very good, but I took it anyway. Unfortunately, the musicians portrayed in the picture decided to use it because they liked it. And so, what do you do? You could manipulate the picture with the sliders in Camera Raw or Lightroom by recovering the shadows, because the real problem is that we have the subjects far too dark with respect to the background. In that case, you really run the risk to have an HDR picture whose uh, look would not be suitable, probably, for this kind of work. At that point, Mask Equalizer can help you a lot, and I would like to show you a technique that I really like so that I can figure out what happens in the picture when I apply a mask, and this is very simple. Curiously, I'm not using curves or any kind of adjustment. I'm just working, at the moment, on the actual picture by knowing that a mask is non-destructive. Let me explain. I will reset everything here, and uh, the reset already creates a mask that is now available, and I can simply hit, say, shadows and see what happens. Why do we see this transparent? Well, you know, if we click on mask here and inspect the mask, we see that the mask in the shadows uh, makes the shadows transparent, indeed. What's the problem with this picture? As we said, and let me just disable the mask for a second, I would like to make this part lighter. So this requires a bit of uh, work. But I can decide what I want to do by simply moving the cursors and seeing which parts of the picture are affected. And this holds for all the controls I have. I have the luxury to work on the luminosity, but I could see for instance, where the shadows in the red channel lie. This is not a very good idea, because, as you see, there are parts of the sweater of this man that really change too much and are not affected by the mask, and also the darkest parts of the faces are not included in the mask. Let's try the green channel, and this is what we have. Let's try the blue channel, and this is what we have. The choice is really up to you, and you can always, of course, go and see how the picture looks like by simply disabling the mask and having a real-time check of the areas you're going to affect. It is not very interesting in this case, but we might as well mask on based on saturation. That is, if you look at the mask, the most saturated parts of the picture are white. I think that the green channel could be a good compromise. But now, what do I do? I can manage the mask as long as it is on a regular layer, but I can't do that if it's on an adjustment layer. So, I will have to make a guess like this, so that I may feather the mask a bit, because we know that luminosity masks need to be feathered. This is the result. Also, I can use the density slider to make the mask less dense, that is, a uh, grey, more or less dark, rather than black. And I can also work on the contrast of the mask to make it more different between the light and the dark parts. Now, with this mask very much active, I could create an adjustment layer based on curves, for instance, and just drag the mask on top of the mask that was born with the layer. I'll simply go yes, and this is now the situation. I'll click on the mask, and we realize that the parts that we want to curve because we want to make it lighter are dark, and the rest is white. This is not what we want, it's the opposite. So I'll just go Command I for invert, and obtain this inverted luminosity mask. Back to normal, 
double click here and we can finally control luminosity straight away with a curve even to large extents if we want don't exaggerate this because HDR is behind the corner but you see it's a huge improvement it's as if we added a flash somewhere and had a fill light that can be controlled exactly with this curve it's up to us to decide what we want to do with luminosity but again this was before and this is after as you realize it is very difficult to explain in detail every possible technique that can be achieved with this kind of uh, plugin but in the end it's very simple you start from shadows mid-tones, highlights or shadow highlights, that is shadows and highlights together. You choose if you want to work on luminosity, red, green, blue or the saturation. And then you build your own workflow, the one that fits you best, I mean, and you can manipulate the mask as easily as you wish. This is the end of this tutorial. I hope it was useful for you and don't hesitate to write if you have advice or comments about this. All the best and bye bye.